In the past couple of years, Max Verstappen has shown us why he is such a highly rated driver, with some brash overtaking and some robust defence, and has also caused a lot of controversy as well. But why exactly, in my opinion, is Max Verstappen the heir to the F1 throne? Well, to find out why, check out this video. But from the moment Max entered F1, he was already causing controversy. As when he entered F1 in 2015, he was the youngest driver in the history of the sport. At just 17 years old. Some people felt he was ready, but some people also felt he was too young to enter into Formula 1. But in the Toro Rosso in 2015, we would soon find out whether Max at 17 was good enough. And after the first few races of 2015, he was. But was still a bit inconsistent. He did have good races, for example at Malaysia and Shanghai, but had not so great races in Bahrain and also Spain. But I think for a 17 year old, inconsistency is to be expected. But once he got some more races under his belt, he showed exactly why he entered into F1 as a 17 year old. As in 9 of the final 12 races, he finished in the points, including a 4th place finish at Kota and a 4th place finish at the Hungaro Ring. Very impressive considering the Toro Rosso car was stuck down in the midfield and also had quite a competitive teammate in Carlos Sainz. And after also pulling off some great overtakes, for example at Spa and Interlagos, people were now rating Max very highly and as a potential future world champion and also as a possible Red Bull driver. And that Red Bull seat was not too far away as five races into 2016, he stepped into that car. Replacing Danny Kvyat who was dropped after causing a massive collision at the 2016 Russian Grand Prix. Now still in my opinion Kvyat was unfairly dropped. Yes I know it was a bad accident but Kvyat should have been given more time and did not do enough in my opinion to deserve to be dropped. Yes Max Verstappen is better than Danny Kvyat there is no doubt about that. But for me you have to have a legitimate enough reason to drop a driver and in my opinion they didn't. And if they really wanted to put Max Verstappen in that car, why didn't they do it for the first race of 2016, not five races in? It actually would have worked out better for both drivers and their confidence going forward. But of course that's what Red Bull did, but for Max he had a very memorable first Grand Prix for Red Bull. As on his debut for the team, he won in Spain. In a great drive where he just about held off the Ferrari of Kimi Raikkonen. And that was all after the two Mercedes drivers took each other out on the first lap. But still the victory was thoroughly deserved for Max. And was now the youngest race winner in the history of Formula 1. What an impressive way to start at Red Bull. And for the rest of 2016 he continued to have impressive performances. For example his drive at Silverstone where he went round the outside in that great move on Nico Rosberg. And also his drives in Malaysia, Suzuka and of course Brazil. We'll get on to his drive in Brazil though in a bit. But for Max 2016 was mostly a good season. And he did show that he could compete at the absolute top of F1. All he needed was Red Bull and Renault together to produce a better car going forward. So that maybe in 2017 Max could actually go for the world championship. But that is exactly what he didn't do in 2017. As for one, the Red Bull car was not good enough and the Renault power unit was way off Mercedes and Ferrari. And Max also suffered plenty of reliability problems during the season. At races such as Bahrain, Canada, Spa and Baku. And was took out on the first lap in Spain and Austria as well. And let's not forget that famous moment in Singapore. So Max's results were massively hindered by things he really couldn't control. But despite that, he still had some very impressive performances. For example, his win in Malaysia where he made a daring move on Lewis Hamilton at Turn 1. And who could forget Mexico where he dominated that race from start to finish. And pulled off a great move by going round the outside of Sebastian Vettel for Turns 1 and 2. And you also have to remember the race at the US Grand Prix where he came from the back of the grid and almost finished on the podium. So despite the reliability issues and the bad luck, Max still showcased why he was such a good driver. But again needed Red Bull and Renault together to produce a better car. And compared to 2017, they did. 
but in the first six races, Verstappen did not utilise this correctly. After making crucial mistakes in Australia, Bahrain, Shanghai, Baku and Monaco, which ended up costing him, in my opinion, two race victories. And by the end of the Monaco Grand Prix weekend, he was basically out of the title fight. And he really did a disservice to the talent that he does have. But when it comes to those mistakes, we'll get onto that in just a moment. But after Monaco, he stopped making mistakes finally, and from the Canadian Grand Prix on, he was one of the best drivers on the grid, as he had fantastic podium finishes and a couple of victories, and again showed why he is so highly rated with drives like he did, for example, at the US Grand Prix, where he came from near the back of the grid to almost win the race outright. And I think mostly 2018 was a success, but there is still a lot for Verstappen to work on. And now he's hoping for 2019 that Red Bull and Honda can produce a car that is good enough to win races on a consistent basis. But what exactly is Max so good at and what does he have to work on going forward? Well when it comes to why he's so good, it's pretty simple. He's a very aggressive and very fast racing driver. For example, when it comes to overtaking, he is very authoritative and very hard to keep behind. Just think back to the 2018 Brazilian Grand Prix where he pulled off some great moves on Sebastian Vettel and also Valtteri Bottas. But he's also very robust in his defence meaning that it is very hard to get past. Just look at what he did to Bottas at the Italian Grand Prix. Even though he did get a penalty for a defensive move, Bottas could not get past because of how good Max is at defending. And that is why Max is so hard to pass because he's so aggressive and again robust with his defence. But there has been instances where Max has gone too far. For example, you have the incidents with Kimi Raikkonen in 2016 at the Hungarian and Belgian Grand Prix, where he crossed the line when it comes to how many times you're allowed to move on a straight and also during a braking zone. And for me, he went too far. And then you can look at the incidents in 2018. In Shanghai, he was too impatient and too aggressive. Then in Baku of Daniel Ricciardo, he made too many moves whilst defending his position. And for me, was the cause of that accident. And then in Monaco in practice 3, he was pushing way too hard and completely blew his chances of a victory at Monaco. Now all of these errors for me come down to one kind of mental error. Max, in my opinion, struggles to think clearly in high pressure situations. An experienced driver would not have tried to go around the outside of Lewis Hamilton at that corner in Shanghai, or would have gone down the inside of Sebastian Vettel at the hairpin. They would have waited to make their move, knowing that they were much faster. But this type of mental error really comes with how old Max is. It is something that is very common in a younger driver, and it does tend to go away as the driver does get more experienced. And that is what I think will happen with Max when it comes to this mental error. As time goes on, it should go away. Another thing that he has to work on is his emotional control. I'm sure you've all seen the incident between Esteban Ocon and Max Verstappen after the race in Brazil, where Max took it too far and started pushing Ocon. What he did was unacceptable and he has to try and control his emotions better. But again, this does tend to happen more with younger drivers than it does older drivers. And it should also go away as Max grows up. And he has to make sure that he does improve on this because it will cost him going forward. As it will be a weakness that his rivals will pick on and try to exploit. But also with Max Verstappen, lots of people compare him to some of the greatest drivers in the history of F1 because they think he is as talented as those drivers such as Senna and Schumacher. But how does he compare to those types of drivers? Well, he is very similar to Senna and Schumacher in how aggressive he is when it comes to his driving. Senna and Schumacher were also very aggressive when trying to pass other people, and they were both certainly very aggressive in defending. Michael Schumacher many times went over the line when it came to how aggressive he defended his position. And Verstappen does remind me a lot of those two drivers again when it comes to aggression. And it's not necessarily a bad thing because look how it worked out for Senna and Schumacher. Senna won three titles and Schumacher won seven. And for me, it's definitely a good thing to have. But when it comes to Senna and Schumacher, I think Max is a lot more like Michael Schumacher. 
not only because he's so aggressive when trying to overtake and also defend, but because he has one trait that Michael had in his career. The ability to push hard and to maintain a great pace during a Grand Prix. Again, go back to the 2018 Brazilian Grand Prix to see an example of this. As up until the point he had his accident with Esteban Ocon, Max was getting faster and faster and maintaining that great speed as the race went on. And that is something Michael had over his rivals back in his day. And was also another component of why Michael was so successful. And this skill that Max has will come in very handy in a few years time. But another similarity he does have to Senna and Schumacher is great drives in the wet. Senna of course has his at Donington in 1993 as Michael has his in Spain in 1996. And Max has his in Brazil of 2016. Now the way it was similar to Senna and Schumacher is because Max showed for one how good he is in the wet. And showed that he was in difficult conditions at least one of the best drivers if not the best driver on the grid. And that is also a very very important skill to have. And honestly I do think the comparison with Senna and Schumacher is right. Because already Max has showcased that he does have the talent to be just as good as Senna and Schumacher. And I personally rate him that highly in terms of what he can do later on in his career. And I don't think the comparison is incorrect at all. But how does he compare to say the top drivers in Formula 1 right now? Compared to Lewis Hamilton, in my opinion, Max is not yet as good. In my opinion, Lewis is quicker over a qualifying lap and is also more consistent. Max is close to Lewis in terms of overall skill, but I don't think he is as good of a driver right now. But I will say, compared to Sebastian Vettel, I do think Max Verstappen is a better driver. For one, I think Max is better at overtaking and also defending his position. And Max, in my opinion, is faster. I will say though Vettel is a lot better at leading the pack away from the front of the grid. Which let's be honest Sebastian is probably the best on the grid at doing that. So I do think Verstappen is better than Vettel but I don't think yet we can compare him to Charles Leclerc. Because as of now Leclerc has not been in a comparable enough car. And for me he is better than drivers like Bottas, Gasly, Ricardo, and Kimi Raikkonen. So for me, Max Verstappen is the second best driver on the grid. Behind Lewis Hamilton, who again for me is the best driver on the grid. And that is exactly why I said at the start of this video that Max is the heir to the throne in F1. Because Lewis only has two or three years left. And once he goes, Max Verstappen is likely to be the top dog in F1. He may not be winning the titles, but he will be the best driver overall in terms of speed and overall skill. And I think he's a worthy successor to Lewis once Lewis actually retires. But once Hamilton retires, if Verstappen does get in the best car, he is going to be a very, very scary prospect. Because he is the type of driver that in the best car could win four or five championships in a row. He is, in my opinion, that good. He could do a Michael Schumacher and win five titles in a row. But again, when it comes to overall skill out of all the drivers, Max, in my opinion, is the next best driver in Formula 1. The only driver that could beat him to that is Charles Leclerc. But again, we do have to see what Leclerc does in a Ferrari in 2019. So until then, Verstappen is the next best thing. And if the new partnership between Red Bull and Honda does go well in 2019 and also for 2020 and for the future after that, then Max could be winning titles very soon.